What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Just Knock Smith channel. Um, today's video, as you've seen, we're going to be talking about death wobble, heim steering, ball joints, etc. We're also going to be going over a few more things for all you subscribers that are subscribed. We're almost to 5,000 subscribers. So don't forget, click that subscribe button down below if you haven't already. Um, but we're going to go ahead and knock out what the video is actually about first and then stay tuned for the end because we've got a bunch of surprises coming for the F-250 back here behind me and just some kind of personal stuff that we're going to talk about as well. So just make sure that you stay tuned and watch the whole video if you're a subscriber here on the channel or just get your info and run perfectly okay with that too. Make sure you leave me a thumbs up down below if you like what you watched or if you learned anything. So I do have my heater running over here in the background, so I'm sorry if that's a little bit loud, but it's literally like 30 degrees out here right now. So I'm gonna have to leave that on during the video, so I do apologize for that. I may turn it off halfway through the video or whatever once it warms up a little bit in here. So we're gonna be going over what kind of steering is on my truck. I get this question over and over and over and over and over. So that's why I'm making a video on it because now whenever people message me, I get tons of messages every single day. I try to get back to all of them. I really just can't, um, but I try. And I do appreciate all the support and I appreciate each and every one of y'all that message me and feel free to leave comments. I honestly see my comments on YouTube more than I do my Instagram. The videos here on YouTube and I can get back to those a little bit easier actually because there's less comments on my YouTube channel than I get you know direct messages on Instagram. But anyway let's jump right into this video and go over what we've got done to the front end of the truck. So right there is one of the surprises actually but I'll keep that for later on in the video. Um, so here's my truck. It is a pretty much 19 or 20 inch lifted F250. It's a 06. Um, pretty much 05 through 2020, the axles and the steering and everything is very, very spot on, exact, the same in the front. So this is gonna apply to pretty much all F250s. Um, so what I wanna go over first is the tie rod bar, the drag link, and back here in the back, the track bar, okay? And now of course, from where I have this big lift kit on here, it's gonna look a little bit different, but the only thing that should look any different than yours is the axle truss with the track bar. So your track bar on your stock truck is gonna be mounted right here with a ball joint. So my track bar no longer mounts right here with a ball joint, but that doesn't matter. Um, this is still perfectly fine. You can still do this. You would just remove that ball joint. And right here I have a steel, uh, like it's like a donut spacer. And you can get those from Striker Off-Road Designs as well. And then uh, PMF Suspension, they make those as well. It pretty much converts this hole to a three-quarter bolt. And then you can run a Heim joint with a three-quarter bolt through it and run your track bar up to where your factory track bar bracket would be, which is up there. Uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit more here later on in the video because that's a little bit different from where I have the lift kit and such. But the drag link and your tie rod bar is gonna be pretty much all your models gonna be perfectly fine. So first what I wanna go over, don't pay attention to the little bit of rust right there. That's all gonna go away whenever we get the steering stabilizers on. This truck is taking forever to actually get done. Uh, we should have a lot more to come for it. So like I said, don't pay attention to that. That's all gonna get fixed, cleaned up. It's just, uh, there's some little steel spacers in here and they're raw and that, that just wipes right off right there. It's just, it's, it's just rust uh, from where I washed the truck and it's just dripping off of those raw steel spacers anyway so the tie rod bar your factory tie rod bar is going to be like an inch and a half in diameter you know steel cast steel or forged steel whatever and it's going to be a bar from about right here at that bend i don't know if you can see that bend i'll show that to you up close here in a second but it's going to be from right there to about right here and then on each side, you're gonna have the tie rod ends. So your tie rod ends have ball joints in them, pretty much. Um, this one over here for sure has a ball joint. This one over here, or maybe it's this one over here. One of them has more of like a spherical, it's not really like a ball joint, like with a stud. It's a little bit different, but it's pretty much a ball joint. Um, now on your drag link, your drag link has a very long stud and don't pay attention to how my tie rod bar mounts down here and the drag link mounts up here. That 
simply because of the lift kit I'm running a high steer knuckle so that spaces that up without having to run like a spacer right here that mounts this just up higher so then it can still be in line with the track bar which is what you want you want your drag link and your track bar to have pretty much the same geometry see if I lower the camera down you can't even see the track bar you actually want this to be just a hair tilted more up than your track bar or then you you actually want the track bar to be at a hair more of a degree of an angle than the drag link but not not much at all like pretty much exactly the same so what I done and a buddy of mine helped me and welded these bungs in and all of that I'll show you the tubing that we used I'll explain the heim joints that we used these are chromoly inch and a quarter heim joints guys these are absolutely massive so these are just, I mean, way stronger than the factory ball joints, like ridiculously stronger. Those are accepted with a three-quarter bolt. And pretty much you take your factory tie rod bar, and your factory tie rod bar has to be bent, or your factory tie rod bar has a bend in it. Uh, so then whenever this turns and moves, it clears your differential cover. So you want to have some space right here in between your tie rod bar and your differential cover. So pretty much as far as modifications go that you have to actually do to the truck is I took a one inch step bit so it goes all the way from like, I don't know, like a quarter inch all the way up to one inch. I'll show you the step bit right now actually. So don't mind my mess of drill bits, but right here is the step bit that I actually used on my knuckles and I'll explain that in a second, but this very last hole or very last size is one inch. So you'll need a one inch step bit. And what you're gonna do is if your truck is perfectly in a line and it's it drives straight, etc., it's just absolutely perfect. You can take off your tie rod bar, the whole bar with the tie rod ends and all, and take off your drag link completely. Okay, and then what you're gonna wanna do is measure from hole to hole on your factory stuff, okay? So then, I, I wanna say it was somewhere around like 60 inches or 60 and a half inches or something. Uh, the truck was perfectly in a line. I took the factory tie rod bar off of the truck. And what I done was I took the factory tie rod bar off of the truck and the factory drag link and we built the heim steering and the tie rod bar, so your, your heim joint drag link and your tie rod bar, and I'll go over what size tubing, heim joints, all of that later on in the video. But we pretty much took the truck that was perfectly aligned, took the drag link off, the tie rod bar off, and built an exact replica of the measurements, the hole to hole distances, the bends, everything exactly like the factory components. But it's made out of this two inch DOM tubing that is very, very strong. It's quarter inch wall, two inch DOM tubing. And the heim joints and the weld in bungs are for inch and a quarter heim joints. So those heim joints are just absolutely gargantuous. You do not have to go that big. Just the, the, the sheer mass of the truck. I wanted to do the two inch tubing with the inch and a quarter heim joints. I think what a lot of places do is they do the 1.75 inch tubing, so the inch and three quarter tubing. And then uh, I'm not sure what wall that would be, but of course a very thick wall. And then I think they run the one inch heim joints. And I've also had the seven and eight heim joints and that held up just fine but from where we've got the big oversized wheels the wheel spacers all of that stuff I just wanted it to be as tight and as heavy duty as possible so over here we've got some leftover tubing and I just want to show you this right here I just want to show you how thick this tubing is right here this is the two inch quarter wall so the wall of this tubing is a, is a quarter inch thick. It's absolutely ridiculous, guys. Like this stuff is, like it's so heavy. Like I literally, I can't even hardly pick it up with one hand. So what you're gonna have is you're gonna have two pieces of tubing just like this. And now this is for the drag link and the, and the tie rod bar. This is just extra tubing that I had left over. I bought a 20 foot stick of it. Uh, because the local metal shop I got a really good deal there and it was just cheaper in general to buy a 20 foot stick of the tubing and then chop it up as I need it so this is pretty much what you're gonna have and then you're gonna have on the ends here that 
thread, they actually, they slide in there, just, it's a perfect fit. They slide in there, they're called weld-in bungs, and they're gonna slide in there, and then you'll just weld around on both sides, of course, you know, all the way around, and you're, that's gonna give you threads in this, in this tube, so it won't be smooth anymore. It'll have a piece right here that slides in there, gets welded in, and then that piece has threads. So then your heim joint is gonna thread into that, and then boom, you have a tube, you know, with the heim joints on each end. I recommend measuring, so from this hole up to my pitman arm, and that's a double shear pitman arm, which I also highly, highly recommend. You can buy those at Striker Off-Road Designs, or I done a little YouTube video, uh, me and my buddy built that one. You could watch that YouTube video and try to build you one if you have a TIG welder. Um, or you can just buy one from Striker Off-Road Designs. You can tell them that I sent you and uh, get hooked up, just ask for a wheel. So if your hole to hole measurement is 40 inches, you're gonna wanna put this heim joint from hole to hole with both of the heim joints at 40 inches long when you're in the middle of the adjustment on the thread. So let me show you what I mean by that. So let me get down here and show you what I mean by that. So this is a crawler joint. This is a Striker Off-Road Designs crawler joint. This shaft is very, very long. That's what she said. Anyway, the heim joint is gonna be more like this. It's gonna be right at about two and a half, two inches long. So, theoretically, on a heim joint or crawler joint, you want it to be threaded in at least an inch. So as long as it's got about one inch of threaded of thread inside of the bung, that's, that's gonna give you all of the structural integrity that you need. You don't wanna go any less than that. More is better. Less is worse, that's not good. I said you're gonna have one heim joint on each end that's gonna thread into your drag link or your tie rod bar. So what you're gonna do is if you need from this hole to your other hole, imagine this is a heim joint, not a crawler joint, this is just what I have laying around. From this hole to that other hole needs to be 40 inches to be exactly like your factory. That's just an imaginary number, that's not actually the number. You'll have to measure your drag link or your tie rod bar to measure to you know to get that measurement. So if I want my tie rod bar or my drag link to be 40 inches long, and on the tie rod bar that's a little bit more tricky because you have to bend it, which changes the length, etc. But let's just focus on the drag link right now. It's a straight piece of tubing. It has a heim joint on each end. So you're going to measure from this hole to that hole. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure your threads. They should be two inches. So you wanna have at least one inch threaded into the bunk, which takes away adjustment. So you pretty much imagine that this is one inch shorter, okay? If you're imagining that this is one inch shorter, then you're only gonna have one inch left. So what you wanna do is you wanna thread that hem in an inch and a half, okay? Because then, if you have two inches and you thread it in an inch and a half, that's gonna give you a quarter of an inch out and a quarter of an inch in. Because a quarter plus a quarter plus an inch and a half equals two inches. So you really don't have two inches of adjustment in a heim joint because an inch of that has to be threaded in to the bung for structural integrity. Um, your hardest part that you're gonna run into, you really don't even have to have a welder to do this, guys. I mean, I have a welder now and I could weld these bungs in no problem but you really don't even have to do a welder. I had all of this built. We literally cut it to fit. My buddy welded the bungs in. I mean, that's the only welding that's that's really here. So you have to drill out your knuckles and you have to weld in the bungs. Other than that, it's very straightforward, very simple. Um, of course, you know, your measurements is what's, it, that's what's perfect. So, and then just eyeball the, uh, the bend. And we done that in a Harbor Freight uh, pipe bender. We heated it up and bent it. I wanna say it was like 12 pumps. We done like seven pumps and then we moved it like an inch and then we done another four or five pumps on the bender and that gave us an absolutely perfect bend. And we actually, we actually bent it with that tube a lot longer and then we cut it. So then the bend was over here on the edge. See, it's just personal preference, guys. You can put those bends wherever you want as long as it has them in it. And I have even seen people run straight tie rod bars and they use the seven eighths offset heim joints. So 
So to wrap up this video before we get started talking about some of the stuff that's coming to the channel, some of the stuff that's coming to the truck, the surprise that's in this box, uh, and I've also got something really, really cool to show you guys after this, so stay tuned watching this video, the track bar. Um, your track bar, like I said, you're gonna have to buy that donut thing that goes in here, it presses in there just like a ball joint, and that pretty much just makes this hole, it steps it down from like, Lord, I don't know, probably like an inch and a half or inch and a quarter, all the way down to three quarter. So then that tightly accepts a three quarter bolt. So again, you're just gonna you're gonna get your truck perfect, you know, the track width and all that. You're gonna measure from that hole up to your hole on your factory track bar bracket. See, I have this high steer uh, cross member, so whenever I moved my track bar from right here up to right here, you also had to move it on that side. So that's what all that is. And that bolts in to my PMF HD coilover bucket, which look absolutely crazy sick. They look so awesome. And that's gonna be pretty much it for the hind steering, ball joint delete, uh, you know, making your steering tight again, literally like so tight. And I'm running a Redhead steering box. So huge shout out to Redhead. Um, the first one that I got in actually was broken and I called them back. They shipped me another one overnight before they even got the other one back. Right then and there. Customer service at Redhead steering boxes, they are, it's 10 to one. Definitely an awesome customer service there at Redhead Steering, especially in this kind of industry with truck parts and all that stuff, that's really, really nice to have because sometimes you need that stuff urgently. If it breaks, you just want a company, you know, to hold their accountability and, you know, get that fixed up for you. It's, you know, they're the ones running the business. So they hooked it up on the Redhead Steering Box and it's not giving me any problems. It's not leaked. There's no play in it. The steering is literally tight. I had my buddy 6-7 Cliff. He's got a YouTube channel as well. He drove my truck and that's all he said was he was talking about like how stiff the steering was, like how tight it was, and literally everything's perfect on the truck. Um, I still have to fiddle with the alignment a little bit more, like put it, you know, put some stock wheels on it, put it on an alignment rack. I align the truck, uh, the steering wheel straight, driving down the road, all that. I just want to double check it, you know, before I drive it much on this setup because these tires are literally brand new. So, you know, why have it a fraction of an inch off? you know, or a little bit towed out or whatever, when you don't have to, and that's gonna wear out your tires unevenly, you know, but not that I drive the truck a whole lot anyway, but enough babbling on, let's go on with this video and talk about what we've got in this box. All right, guys, are you ready to see it? Boom. Yes, sir. DB Automotive solid white rock lights. We've got a 12 piece. I did have a 12 piece DB Automotive RGBW. You can see how these have 24 LED chips, guys. Most of your Amazon rock lights only have three. These have 24. If you divide 24 by three, that's literally eight. Eight Amazon rock lights is as bright as one of these, guys. So yes, I know they are a little bit pricey. You get what you pay for, though, guys. Believe me when I say that. DB Automotive, they do sponsor the channel now, but I have ran their products before they ever even knew who I was, before they ever sponsored the channel. And I do have a discount code for these guys as well. It's Hawk10, H-A-W-K. It's gonna be popping up on the screen, one zero. You can use that at checkout and get 10% off of your entire order. And what you're paying for is not only the quality of the brightest rock lights and wheel lights on the market. I have their, their wheel lights as well. I have a video on that. Uh, it's got over 20 something thousand views. Um, the DB Automotive Rock Lights are completely waterproof and completely plug and play, guys. So you don't have to go buy a wire at the Advanced Auto Parts. You don't have to do anything. Their RGBW stuff is just as good. It is plug and play as well. I'm just not big on the colored stuff. The wheel lights are okay. But the way that the RGBW works and is as you can see, these have one, two, three, four, five, six in a row, and we've got four rows of six white LEDs. So the way that the RGBWs are is they have one six row of whites, and then the rest of them is a row of red, a row of green, and a row of blue. So you've got white, red, green, blue, RGBW. That's where that comes from. 
Uh, and then of course you've got your Bluetooth controller and all of that to change the colors and such, but it has true white. You're gonna see a lot of RGB rock lights and they do not have true white. So what I mean by true white is whenever you buy the RGB, like if you do want colors and you want the option to have colored and you want the option to have white, DB Automotive, www.dbautolight.com, they have solid white rock lights that are stupid bright. That's what these are. And then they also have their RGBW rock lights, which they have the red, green, blue chips, the LED chips, and they also have the true white chips, just like what's in these, but those only have six true white LED chips, which is still just as bright as two Amazon rock lights, which is crazy. And these are backed by an awesome warranty. I highly, highly recommend. Like I said, I'm sponsored by them now. We've got them on the back windshield of the truck, got a sticker. We rock all of their lighting. I'm sponsored by them now. But before, I wasn't sponsored by them. Gave them a shot, tried out their, uh, you know, their products. I ran them forever. I've had two sets of their wheel lights now, not because the first set messed up. I switched from the true white wheel lights to the RGBW, um, and they are they're stupid bright. I'm not gonna change those. I'm gonna leave those RGBW. And then the rock lights, they were stupid bright as well. I'll throw up a picture of them. I'm literally, I just, I can't leave nothing alone, so that's the only reason why I even bought the true white, is because I just got kinda, not really tired of the colors, because you can do true white but I just want it to be a little bit brighter without adding so many. So literally if you don't, and this truck is just so tall, it's kind of hard to flood the light that far. So yes, they were stupid bright. Like I actually sold them to a buddy of mine and he put them on his Silverado and his Silverado has like a leveling kit on it or like a four inch lift or something. And they look absolutely retarded bright and they are the RGBW. So from where they're closer to the ground, they're even more bright, you know what I mean? So these, from where the truck's so big, they're gonna have the extra LED chips and they'll be brighter than the RGBW. They're actually gonna be four times brighter than the RGBW. So you've seen this picture right here. That's with the RGBW. So it's gonna be even brighter than that, guys. It's gonna be absolutely retarded. Like, it's gonna be absolutely crazy. It's gonna light up this powder and literally just make this thing absolutely shine at nighttime. It's gonna be absolutely ridiculous. So we've got 12 of those, and after we get the 12 on, any shadows that we have. Um, so I'll show you this really, really cool right quick. You've got, it comes with your switch, it comes with all of your wiring, you've got a fused power wire. Um, let's see here, you've got the switch that you can add right there. Super, super clean. So the way that this works is you have these super clean plug and play connectors. And if you didn't notice, guys, we've got a splitter that splits into four. So four rock lights will plug into this. This is gonna plug into your splitter harness. Your splitter harness goes straight to your positive and negative and the switch, run the switch right through the uh, firewall on the truck, mount this simple and clean underneath the dash somewhere or uh, on the dash. Or you could probably even do some splicing and uh, wire that up to your upfitter switches on your truck or whatever you wanted to do because it's a fused power wire. I mean, the, the opportunities are endless. So you've got your three splitters that have four a piece, four rock lights a piece per splitter, uh, which is going to be 12. And this right here actually has the option for another splitter. So we may add four more uh, in the spots if there's any shadows, which there shouldn't be because these are so stupid bright. Let me, uh, hold on guys, let me set, I'm gonna set my camera on the tripod right here and I'll turn off all of the lights in the garage and we'll go ahead and hook one of these bad boys up and show you how bright it is. All right, guys, so let me show you how simple this is. So we've got our power wire, we've got our ground wire. I'm just gonna plug those into a battery right quick, just a 12 volt battery. We've got our switch right here, which all plugs into our splitters. And our splitters, I don't know why I've got two of them hooked up, I only needed this one, but it doesn't matter. So each rock light, I wanna say, I think it's 15 foot, don't quote me on that, but I think it has 15 feet of wire hooked into it already. Uh, so, aside from that, we also have our 10 foot or maybe 5 foot extensions. So, you can literally mount these babies absolutely anywhere. And he sends you literally everything that you need to do this clean. I mean, the owner of DB Automotive actually runs Bad Habits Automotive. 
Um, he's partial owner of Bad Habits, so they do retarded clean work. They're out of Tennessee. So it's nice to know that somebody that actually builds trucks just like these, you know, somebody that's going to quick, somebody that's going to care about quality and they're selling quality because that's what they do for a living. So Dallas, the owner of DB Automotive, super, super good guy, absolutely awesome, awesome products. And these kits, I know that they may look like they're higher or whatever, guys, but like I said over and over, you get what you pay for. And by the time you go buying all the wires and switches and everything, then you order your cheap Amazon rock lights that go out, you know, three or four months later and you can't do nothing about it. You go ahead and spend the money on these. You don't need as many. So let's say that you're putting two or three Amazon rock lights in your fender wells. You don't have to do that anymore, guys. You can just put one. One of these rock lights is as bright as eight Amazon ones. That's like putting eight in each fender well just if you do one. So, I mean, these are literally crazy bright. So you can literally just mount one of these in your fender well instead of putting three or four big gaudy bright lights in here and making this thing look even more like a circus driving down the road. Anyway, let's get this thing plugged up and I'll show you how bright this is. I'm gonna turn all the lights off here in the shop and uh, yeah, hook. Holy crap, that thing is crazy bright. Look at that. That's gonna be. Let's see if I can get this to hold on. So literally, guys, look at this. That's oh my gosh, guys, they're so bright. It's literally crazy. Look at that. Just one of these is gonna be crazy bright. Look at that. That is just one rock lot. It's making a shadow off of the freaking hose right there. That's how bright this is. Like it literally makes the color look different. But I can literally put it up close, look at that. It's so bright that the camera literally can't even pick up like the color, hold it. But I mean, you can see this, like look back here, that's with no light, that's with a DBA one, one rock light right here guys, look at that. So shine that down, literally you can't even see the truck. Look at that, holy cow. It's literally like a headlight. That's so crazy. Holy crap. All right guys, so with that being said, we're gonna move on to our next big surprise and big movement that we're making here on the channel. So I don't know if you all know this, I don't really talk about income and stuff much. I don't like talking about money. It's not really anybody's business, but we do build uh, slash paint. Not really build, I wouldn't say. I don't really do much like projectors and stuff like that. Pretty much just painting custom headlights and tail lights. Uh, smoothing and color matching mirrors. I've made videos here on the channel of me doing it and it's pretty much opened up like a very large margin for profit on the side of doing YouTube and everything else. And so we needed a paint booth because I had been painting in a storage building and the, the quality standards I, I done a lot better than most people would think, you know, like everything that I've ever shipped out, if I'm not happy with it, I'm not gonna ship it out to a customer thing. We're gonna be able to produce better results first time around and make people more happy. You can take faster results and better results and combine them into one, one swing of the baseball bat and it involves making money. You gotta, you gotta swing the bat, boys. Like you gotta swing it hard and swing it good and just, get it done just get it done but before we go out to the paint booth which it's in a separate storage building it's in the same storage building that I was painting in except now there's an actual booth in there a homemade ish booth I'll show you that um, dbautolot.com www.dbautolot.com if you check out purchase any of their wheel lights LEDs they've got all kinds of stuff just go check out their website if you purchase anything use code HAWK10 H-A-W-K-10 and get 10% off your entire order I don't get a kickback this is simply just to help you guys because I love the support that you guys give me and I want to share these awesome companies that I'm making bonds with along the way so we will be having a install video on those installing the 12 piece rock light set 
and that'll be coming up either next week or maybe late late this week we've also got our face plates dropped off at striker uh, we already dropped those off they were base coated as y'all seen in the previous video and they're getting milled out and then we go back to brad's have them clear coated and then we can put them on and finally our face plates will be done finally months and months later just stay so busy it's so hard to get anything done the rear of the truck is also coming up two inches when we go pick up the face plates um, I'll be doing that but yeah let's go and check out this paint booth Woo, it's bright in here boys it is bright in here that's good that's what you want you want it to be bright in your paint booth so this is gonna allow us to make more money quicker which means more content for you guys and then hopefully someday I can quit painting uh, and only work on my own builds and stuff like that and make money solely off of YouTube we're not there yet but that's the dream guys that's what we're chasing that's what we're after that's what we're gonna do it's not really a dream it's just more or less a goal that hasn't been met yet, but we're going to meet it, guys. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be pretty much it. I uh, hope you all learned something. If you all have any questions, comment down below. As I always say at the end of my videos, guys, always remember everybody starts out as a nobody, and I will see you on the next one. Check out some of the other videos here on the channel. Uh, if you want to, hit that subscribe button down below. Leave me a like. Comment what you want to see next. Comment any ideas. So that's going to be pretty much it. I will see you all in the next one, guys. Peace out. Also, the car is still alive. Runs and drives just fine. We had a slight transmission leak in the last video whenever we took it to Wildcat. Uh, but the oil pan was busted. Charles uh, plate steeled it and everything else. So it's literally a bulletproof transmission pan now. So that's good, too. She's still running and driving. She's trunkless. That booty is not looking thick. She's got her tape windows. This one I done like two o'clock in the morning in the Walmart parking lot. We've had a little bit of a derby with uh, another so-called derby car. But I did practice welding a little bit more. I know I've already said bye. This will make the third time. Look at those dimes, boys. That's pretty good for old boys. Like what? Third time welding? Second time welding now? We've practiced a little bit. Oh yeah, we're getting there. We just gotta, just gotta stick with it. Just gotta keep practicing, boys. Got the light bars on there, though. We're gonna have to take it back to Wildcat here soon. Break her in some more. Anyway, I'm leaving now. It's freezing out here. Bye.